Hi, I'm Jody Clock, and we're here to talk about what do you do when a pet dies, especially at home? Where do you start? We're here to help. Well, the first thing you need to do is don't panic. Because if you panic, all common sense goes out the window. And if you have small children around, then they're going to follow your lead, and they're going to panic too. And that is exactly what you don't want. So take a deep breath, stay calm, collect yourself, and then follow these instructions. Can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. We have a 22-year-old cat, and sometimes I walk in the living room, and I think she died. Step number one, make sure your pet is dead. As strange as that sounds, you might want to go over and check and make sure they are not breathing because sometimes they can lay very still and they can have shallow breathing. That's a whole other set of issues, but first and foremost, you want to make sure that they are dead. And if that is what happened, the next thing that you need to do is look at the area where they did die. Are they on the couch? Are they in their pet bed? Are they on the floor? Are they in the garage? Are they outside? Where did death take place? Because that's going to make all the difference in the world, especially on the memory picture, that if there are other people in the home, especially children, uh, you want to leave them with a little different memory picture. The first thing you want to do if they did die and they are on a piece of furniture, they're on your carpet, really any place um, that could be ruined or soiled, you want to go get a blanket, a sheet, and or a towel. Uh, just something, because what you want to do is your little girl guy, that, that small child, or even that large child, typically when death happens, they're laying on their side uh, in some way, shape, or form. You want to get a towel, you want to lift up that rear end, and you want to place that under them ever so gently. I know it's not pleasant, but things happen, and you would rather have um, all of the body functions let loose on that towel uh, than on maybe that white carpet. Because let me tell you, it's a hard thing to get out. Once that does happen, you might want to take another blanket or their favorite blanket and place it over them. Once you've done that, then, then it's okay. You know, you want to let everyone else know that uh, Mac, or whatever your, your pet's name is, our recent pet that joined the Rainbow Bridge was Mac, then it's okay to introduce he or she to the other people in the house, or maybe even the other four-legged children in the house. That was our case. People forget that uh, their friends, the, the critters, if you will, or the other, other four-legged kids, um, they grieve and they want to know where their buddy went and it's a fact of life they understand that process but they need to know that their buddy even though it was a cat and the cat and the dog didn't get along they want to know that that they died so it's okay to leave your pet child on the floor and introduce the other pets in the household so they can come up and sniff uh, some of them come up and they actually, it's not uncommon for a cat to get up on, on a dog or a, um, an, even another cat and kind of smell or even cover up like you'll see them often do. Um, but they'll hang out for a while. And sometimes you'll see one snuggle up and even take a little nap. That's normal, that's what they do, and that's very healthy. In the meantime, uh, while everyone is saying goodbye, you're going to want to think about what you want to do and now's the time and you've got some things to consider and some choices to make the first thing I'm gonna go back to is your pet died and I made it under the assumption that everyone was home that's in a perfect world pets can die and kids can be away at camp in fact here's a true story we had a small small pocket type of a dog a purse dog if you will ran out of the house and was hit by a car. That pet parent called us and they didn't know what they wanted to do because that was, in their mind, their children's decision. Their children were at camp. 
So at that point in time, we shared with them some options. And these are the options you want to do. If you want to let someone else make that decision or be actively involved with this decision, which does help in the grief process, you don't have to bury or cremate right away. What you can do is put that pet in what we call cold storage. Essentially, it is refrigerated storage that we have here at our pet facilities uh, that only hold pets and they stay there in a blanket wrapped up snug as a bug in a rug if you will but they it's not a bad visual and they can stay there for a week to ten days until you make up your mind uh, there is a fee for that but it's well worth it especially when there are other people involved the other option is if you want to do it yourself, and some families have done that. There's no wrongs, no rights. It's what you're comfortable with. In the winter or in the cold weather, uh, it, it's not a bad thing to do. You can wrap your pet up. You want to make sure that there's plastic or a tarp underneath it, and then you want to make sure that that pet is over dry ice, or depending on the size of that pet, you may even want to place that pet uh, in a cooler. I know that sounds strange, but many families have done that. Or even in their freezer. Yep, I know, that sounds disgusting. Um, but the reality is that some people have done that, and that does work, and that is an option. Um, I don't advocate that, of course, but those are your decisions. The bottom line is you want to keep that pet from decomposing, and the only thing that will stop that is to keep it refrigerated. Once you've done that, now you've got some options. When, whether it's your children or your spouse or whoever comes home, you can talk to them. You can ask them what they want. Do they want to bury? Do they want to cremate? And if they want to bury, you've got some decisions again that you need to make. It's not as simple as it sounds. Years ago, uh, people used to just think that they would bury their pet out in the backyard and that was okay. Well, today there are rules and ordinances in planned communities and in some cities. So you have to check with your ordinance of where you live. The other thing you need to consider is, am I gonna live there the rest of my life? And if I am, that's okay. But if I'm gonna be moving, is it important to take that pet with me? Only you can answer that. Another thing to keep into consideration is, you might bury that pet what you don't want is someone to come by and unbury that pet. And I don't mean a human, I mean a critter. Whether that's a coyote, whether that's another dog, whether that's squirrels, rabbits, I don't know. But there are, there are, is nature out there and, you know, that's instinct. So while that might sound disgusting, once again, that's just a reality and a thing you need to take into consideration. So if you do want to bury that pet and you want to do it in your backyard or your family property, we recommend that you get a pet casket. Pet caskets come in all shapes and sizes, but what that pet casket does is it zip locks it tight, if you will. It seals it so no earth elements can get in there. And why is that important? That's important to keep that smell and to keep everything contained so other critters don't come by and try to unbury that. We have several of those available. You can also make one yourself, many people do. I recommend that you do it out of wood and do not use a cardboard box because that cardboard box is gonna decompose and you're right back to the same situation or problem uh, that we're trying to stay away from. If you're not bearing in your backyard or your family farm or property, you also have the option to bury at some cemeteries in the area that allow pets. Um, there's a wonderful, wonderful cemetery location and it is a PLPA, Professional Pet Loss Alliance member, which is so critical. In Grand Rapids called Sleepy Hollow. If that is something that you wanna do and have your pet around other furry animals, that's the one that I would recommend calling. Another option is the NOAA project. They have a very small and limited spaces available pet cemetery. 
There's a small fee and that fee is 100% uh, charitable donation to make that happen. But again, that pet needs to be casketed. So those are your choices uh, in this area for a casketed burial for your furry child. The other options are cremation. Cremation is very common. In fact, most people will cremate their pet. The reasons are pretty, pretty straightforward. It's transportable. You don't know where you're going to end up in your lifetime, but that pet will go with you throughout your life and often people when they die elect to whether they're buried or cremated have their pet be buried meaning their cremains cremated remains placed in their casket with them and or if they are cremated themselves have those cremated remains commingled if you will so when they're scattered or buried they're with them so it just kind of completes that, that full circle of life. That's not uncommon. So, you know, really nothing is out of the ordinary. If you can think of it, it's probably been done. When people cremate their pets, uh, the thing to take into consideration is, do you want uh, to have an urn? Do you want a photo urn? Do you want to scatter uh, maybe in their favorite little hunting place where they used to, uh, Max used to like to fish down in Indian Lake when he was a puppy. So he would go in and he would go down and try to get some bass and it was just crazy as heck to watch. And so to sprinkle a little cremains of Max down there, well, that would only be appropriate. But you may still want to keep a part for yourself. So there are many types of urns and or keepsakes available. So don't think that you have to make a decision right away once you cremate them. You can place that pet in an urn and down the road, you can take some of those cremated remains, you can put them in a keepsake. Keepsakes come in all shapes and sizes. They come in jewelry. As a matter of fact, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know that I was wearing one right now. This bracelet right here is a keepsake. We have many of these types of things to offer, but this happens to be my cat. Now this is Baby. Baby was born in March, and Baby ironically died in March uh, almost 12 years later. Baby was a rescue. So I thought it was only fitting to have March's birthstone in there. So I can wear this, and very discreetly, I know that that's my baby and I know that that's special and nobody has any idea. That's not creepy. That's kind of cool. But some people, you know, they're just not ready for that yet. So you don't want to walk around with a poster board advertisement on yourself. It's just something you want to keep quiet. We have lots and lots of things available. In closing, last but not least, whether you bury or cremate a pet, there's the one thing we didn't talk about, which is the actual death itself of your pet. In death, whether it is human or pet, comes the thing we all like to not talk about is grief. Some people are okay with it and some people aren't and there are no rules. So you might want to take the time to personally honor that pet whether that's writing something in a journal, paying tribute, whether that's making a memory table, whether that's making a photo collage, or whether that's just saying a silent prayer and lighting a candle. All of those things are very important. But if you can't shake that loneliness or that loss after a couple of weeks, you might wanna give ourselves a call or your pastor or, or someone uh, in that type of arena a phone call because pet loss is real we are certified in pet loss and grief companioning and sometimes you have to talk through it one of the things that we will be offering in 2012 is a pet loss support group if that's something that would be valuable to you or you could benefit from or even know someone who would please give us a call and we'll make sure to get you on our list send the information and hope to see you there.